Jerry Yang is the 2007 World Series of Poker main event champion, and he earned eight and a quarter million dollars for that victory. Prior to winning the second largest live tournament in poker history, Yang had a little over ten thousand dollars in lifetime tournament winnings. A Laotian immigrant, Yang now lives in Southern California with his wife and children. Jerry, let's start at the beginning. Tell us about how you came over to America. Well, thank you, Lizzie. Thank you for having me today. Um, I came to America um, in 1979. Um, as you know, the uh, political situation in my country back then, back in the 70s, uh, was not very stable. And that was in, in Laos? Uh, yeah, in Laos. And uh, after the American soldiers pulled back, um, you know, my people, uh, my father here uh, actually um, fought along with the American soldiers during the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, gave my family some credibility to come to America. So, but in order to come to America, um, we had to uh, get to Thailand first. And uh, when we heard that the communists uh, arrived in, the communist soldiers arrived in, in our country, uh, we had two choices. One, to stay and face um, persecution, mm -hmm. you know, torture, and, and even death, uh, or go to Thailand and maybe uh, had the opportunity to come to America, and that's the How did that's you get the over option to Thailand? that we chose uh, by boat. Yeah, and so um, the first time that we attempted the escape, my family and some other villagers actually got caught by the, um, the uh, communist soldiers. And what happened? And I remember uh, as a young boy, about eight years old, uh, and I saw AK-47 pointing at my face, you know, and my, my cousins and my relatives. Uh, second attempt that we made, I, after that they let us go back to another village, and um, a couple of months later we attempted an, another escape, and the second time we were successful. So uh, we made it to Thailand, and I, I spent another four years in, in a refugee camp in Thailand before com coming to America. And so when you first came to America, where did you settle? Uh, Nashville, Tennessee, actually, and very, <laughs> yeah, talk about culture shock, yeah. <laughs> and how old were you then? Yeah, I was about um, eight. Uh -huh. Actually, I'm sorry, uh, eight was when I, I escaped from my country. I was about 13 or so, okay. yeah, between 12 and 13. So and how did you adjust to living in Nashville from Thailand? Oh, totally different. I mean, coming to America was a dream come true for me. You know, I found freedom. Uh, I found uh, life, basically, you know and education. I never had any education prior to coming to America. I had to learn an ABC 1, 2, 3 at the age of uh, uh, 12 and a half and 13. So that was very difficult for me. But um, at least, and um, you know, I had a life and I had freedom. Uh, we were the place we were putting into a project in Nashville, Tennessee, one of the poorest uh, places in America that I that I could remember. And I lived with the, in the project with the basically ghettos. but. Um, Again, I had the opportunity to go to school and, and be able to um, play ball and, and play with the toys that yeah. I never had in my, my whole life. And so that, that was a good experience, actually. It made me a, a stronger person than, than, you know, than if I had not gone through that. And then you chose to pursue higher education, mm -hmm. right? That's correct. So what um, did you do for college? Yeah, I went to um, uh, college and I, I studied biology. I got my Bachelor of Science degree in biology. And... Uh, I actually um, applied to medical school, actually, and wanted to become a doctor, and actually uh, got accepted to medical school, you know, and so, but I, you know, I chose graduate school instead, and uh, got my uh, graduate degree in health psychology, and um, I worked here and there, but uh, the last job that I had was a, um, a, a psychology and a social worker for a foster family agency in Monroe Valley. So you married, and you have six children. Yes, when did I you am. get married? <laughs> I got married in 1993 to my wonderful wife, you know, very loving, very supportive wife and hardworking and, uh, you know, um, you know, like uh, 10, 10 years later we have 13 kids, you know, and just really, what, 13 years later, <laughs> my, my daughter is going to be 13 soon, so, um, you know, it just, uh, I have two, two boys and four girls, you know, and uh, the youngest is 13, will be 13 anyway. And the youngest is three, so you know a lot, my life has been a blessing, a, a true um, blessing. So I'm just very, very grateful. 
So now we're going to talk about poker. Mm -hmm. When did you, did you grow up with poker? Was it something that was part of your life as a child? Or? Oh no, no, uh, totally, <laughs> no, <laughs> totally the opposite. Uh, my father, uh, my father uh, is totally against gambling. I mean, he's sitting right here, and you know, he can he can tell you. I mean, even playing checkers, he's, he considered that as gambling. You know, he wants us to focus in school and just be you know become a dentist or a doctor or somebody in porn. You know, yeah, so something respectable. Yeah, yeah, and so. You know, I, I just uh, started playing poker about two years ago. I saw the WPT and ESPN, the World Series oh, of Poker. Really? And I saw, um, uh, I remember one show, I saw Lee Watkinson actually, too, playing. And uh, I, I said to myself, you know what, maybe I can do that too, you know. And I bought a couple of books and I started reading and watched more World Poker Tour, listening to Mike and, and Vince <laughs> and doing some of their, their uh, commentaries. And that's how I learned. So... From there, I, I moved into the very low limit, you know, the one, two, or uh, the very low um, buy-in, like $15 buy-in, $25 buy-in, just kind of... Were you successful when you first began? I, I was actually, yes. I, I, w I was very surprised that I started winning, you know, a little here and there, and that was able to, and having six kids, you know, I can't really, I couldn't really spare, you know, much change no big to play. Swings. Absolutely. So, I, I play whenever I could save some money, and my wife allowed me to, or um, when my kids are in bed, or something, or my wife is home. She was working at the time, too, so she worked during the night, and I worked during the day, so, you know, one of us had to be home with the kids. Um, but um, I, I tried to play, you know, whenever I could, but I play very, very part-time. Uh, if I was lucky, I'd play maybe one time per week, you know, and maybe a couple of hours, that's it. Did you find any one book really helpful to your game while you were learning? Um, I have to give a lot of credit to um, um, Mr. Doyle Bronson, and I read his book, The Super System, and that really helped me a lot. And also another book by um, uh, uh, T.J. Cloutier and Tom McAvoy, that mm -hmm. book also really helped me. So I, uh, those were basically the two books that I, I read and I, I studied and just more TV. And you, had you ever gone to Vegas before the World Series of Poker? No, no, um, never have. And last year, um, I mean this year, I went there because I won a seat at uh, well, Pachanga. Tell us about winning the seat. Yeah, I, it was the last satellite that they offer. Um, the last Saturday of every month they offer what is called um, uh, the Big Showdown at Pachanga. And uh, uh, I, I won the very last one that they offer. How back, many players were in, in the May. satellite? It was 188, including me. And it was and a two hundred twenty-five dollar buy-in. Two twenty-five buy-in, yes. And um, you know, thank God I was able to win that tournament and <laughs> got the seat and went there. My intention was to, uh, to go and have fun and and meet some of the, these world-class poker mm -hmm. players and just kind of have fun. And I I met that goal basically the first day. And I I remember calling my wife that evening. And I said, you know what, honey, you can't believe it. I met Jennifer Harmon today or Johnny Chan or. Uh, uh, Howard Lederer or yeah. John Jawanda, you know, just really very, very amazing. And so, but to actually win the whole thing was yeah. <laughs> a, a true blessing. So, <clears throat> when you came out to Vegas for the World Series, was the main event the only tournament that you played in? Yes, that's the only tournament that I could afford. <laughs> in fact, I, I couldn't, even, I couldn't even afford to pay for a hotel. And another casino, Lake Elsinore and Resort Casino in Lake Elsinore. Uh, I spoke to Pat, who is the poker manager. He was very, very kind. And I want to thank Pat and Kurt and Ted. Um, they, they put out the money, you know, to, to um, get the hotel. I say, Pat, just find me the cheapest place in, in Las Vegas. So I'll, where did you stay end up staying? <laughs> um, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> but... Uh, um, Trust me, it, it wasn't really that safe uh, to to stay there, and so. Did you stay there the whole time throughout the entire main event? Um, until uh, until the, the the final. See so the night before the, the final night before table. The final table. I, I knew. Cool uh, yeah, I know. I call I call my wife and I want to thank Pat again. They they sent a limo to my home to pick up my family, oh. and uh, I said to my wife, we we have enough money now to to stay at the Rio's. <laughs> So your whole family was out there. Yeah, right. Yeah, my kids came, uh, my wife came, and also my my father and his family, my uh, my mother and my brother-in-law, some some other church members, mm -hmm. you know, from my church came to support me. So that was, that was great. So let's start at the beginning of the main event. Which mm -hmm. day one did you start on? I stayed. I started day two actually. Okay. Yeah, Saturday. And was there anybody you were familiar with at your table, or what was it like when you first sat down and the mm -hmm. clock started? You know the. My, the first table I played, I didn't know anybody. There wasn't any, um, you know, a pro player or anybody. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, I believe the second day that I played, um, Brandon Adams was there. And uh, I played with Joe Seabock and also uh, Jamie Goh's mom. 
but I met a lot of wonderful people, you know, just wonderful people, and the Harris people and ESPN people were wonderful people, very helpful, very kind. So it was a, a wonderful experience for me. So d did you end day one with a nice chip stack, or where I were you at that if point? If I remember correctly, I had 99,700, so that was all right. And then my second day, at the end of second day, I had 400 and. 38,000 or 37,000, something like that. So uh, I made some progress, yes. What was it like watching the field just disappear around you and the tables were just shrinking and shrinking and you're still there? <laughs> yeah, when you're still there and, and when you when you come in uh, as a true rookie like myself, you know, I, I felt good actually and I, I played the best that I, I, I knew how and uh, I try to be patient, you know, but at the same time I use a little of my background in psychology to, you know, play the cards and also you know, play my opponents, and so you know, it worked out for me. So you know that. that was How that. did your background in psychology help you? Um, you know, I, as, as I said earlier, I had my degree in health psychology, so I tried to study my opponents very carefully, especially the first couple of hours, and I try to set up a um, create a, a mental picture of each opponent, and. Um, I just kind of use that uh, as an arsenal, you know, and to to my advantage basically. And so I try to watch my opponent the way they move, especially from from the table up, you know, and just um, do do the best that I could, and it worked out. So, was there a point in the tournament when you just felt very confident and you knew you were going to make it a big hand or anything like that? That I that I had a chance to win. Yeah, where you just were like, wow, I'm, I can I, make it. Yeah, I, not until the final table, to be honest with you. Um, yeah. Um, when I at the final table, when I, um, as you know, I went in in, in terms of chip that was eighth in play, eighth place, and I. Um, you went on a rampage. Yeah, I was like very aggressive, and the night before I had a plan. I strategized the night before, and I knew that the only the only way that I could win the tournament was to be go out and really be aggressive. And when I went up to 40, 40 mil, that's when I knew that I could could take down the championship. Did you play that aggressively throughout the entire event, or just not when it got to the final table? Not necessarily. Yeah, I, uh, at the beginning of the term, I usually, uh, at the beginning of the tournament, I usually play very conservatively. Get Again, a raid on your yeah, opponents. Absolutely. Um, but obviously, when, whenever they break a table, you have to re-study your new opponents. Yeah. And so, um, but uh, I, I try to play more aggressive toward the end of a, a tournament rather than at the beginning. So how were you feeling once you started knocking people out at the final table? Um, I feel very bad. I knocked out my my my, my now. I, he's one of my idols, uh, Bill Edler, you know, and uh, I felt kind of bad. But uh, he is one of my my favorites, and also um, just watching some of the people going out, some, especially the top players. It kind of you know it made me feel a little bit more secure because I knew I I don't have to face them. And, yeah, uh, um, later on. So um, just. Um, just I just tried the best that I could. How did you manage to stay so focused? For the final table was almost thirteen hours, I think, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, you have to, Lizzie. You have to, and in poker, you have not only you have to be mentally focused at all times. Uh, not only you have not only that you have the ability to study your opponent, but you got to be patient. You got to have that discipline. Otherwise, you're not going to have a chance. So then it was down to heads up play between mm -hmm. you and Tuan Lam. What was that like? Um, I felt good actually because I was like uh, I believe I was like a, um, five to one in terms of chips, you know. But and it flip flopped, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I, I I doubled him up. Uh, he he flopped. Uh, he called me with like four three of diamonds, and you know I had ace nine, and he caught the four, you know, and so. Um, I doubled him up, but I, I never gave up. Actually, I knew I still he was playing a little tight. So did you uh, make any changes to your game once oh, it was no, heads up? No, no. I I knew that he was waiting for good cards, and, and in order to maintain my my lead, I had to pick up the blinds and the antes, and I try to be aggressive and and just really be um, um, tough at the table and and. Um, just not uh, giving any of the antis or blinds, and so I raised with nothing, you know, basically nothing, and just put a if lot you of thought pressure. thought he had nothing, you raised. Yes, absolutely, yes, and especially when I had the uh, the position. So tell us about that final hand. Oh, that was that was a, a miracle hand. Oh, thank God, I was, uh, as you know, I pocket eights, and he had eights, queen, and diamonds, and. Um, Normally, I raise about 2.5 at that point, but at that point, I decided just to raise 1.5 and um, just to make him think that I was weak, and he put put it all in, and you know, I called, and uh, the flop was a, a devastating flop for me, but thank God, you know, um, the 7 and the 6 came, so um, I was able to win, so I'm very grateful.
So now that you've won the main event, mm -hmm. do you plan on traveling, becoming a professional poker player? No, no I, uh, you know, the last couple of months, uh, not couple of months, last month or so, I've been doing a lot of charity work, you know. I donated uh, my 10%. Uh, the last which I, charities were I donated to? to the Ronald McDonald House uh, two hundred seventy five thousand and also two two hundred seventy five thousand to the Make a Wish Foundation. My last two hundred seventy five will be donated uh, sometime in September to feed the children in Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. and I'll be traveling over there and make that last donation. So, and I also donate some money to my the foster uh, family agency that I worked uh, I used to work for, right. and so I play with the Make a Wish Foundation with Annie too. You can also. Matt uh, Vasquez, the uh, San Diego Padres announcer in San Diego. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing a lot of some of the charity work. So that is something that I want to continue. But obviously, I want to be a good ambassador for poker. Mm -hmm. Um, how, do you, how are you going to go about doing I, I, that? I like to travel. I like to play um, some tournaments, you know, and, and uh, meet the fans and talk to different people. And if there's anything I can do as a, a, a poker player and a um, um, an individual, you know, I, I like to contribute as much as I can to poker, the, com the poker community, not only in America, but worldwide. So what's it like being an instant poker celebrity? It feels great. I mean, every day I kind of look at my bracelet and I, you know, I, I have, you know, the feeling hasn't really sunk in yet, but uh, hopefully, you know, a, a few months from now, I, I'll be able to look back and say, hey, you know what, well, Jerry, you're really the champ, especially for 2007. So I look forward to going back to uh, Las Vegas and, and defend my title and hopefully we can win back to back. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Lizzie Harrison with 2007 main event champion Jerry Yang for Card Players TV.